हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू द फिफ्थ लेक्चर ऑफ वीक वन ऑफ द कोर्स प्रोसेस इक्विपमेंट डिज़ाइन एंड हीयर वी आर डिस्कसिंग बेसिक डिज़ाइन पैरामीटर्स एंड दिस टॉपिक आई हैव स्टार्टेड इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर दैट इज़ लेक्चर फोर वेयर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड डिफरेंट पैरामीटर्स विच आर इन्वॉल्व इन बेसिक डिज़ाइन इक्वेशन ऑफ हीट ट्रांसफर दैट इज़ क्यू इज इक्वल टू यू ए डेल्टा टी एल एम सो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड ओवरऑल हीट ट्रांसफर कोफिशेंट डिफरेंट टर्म्स इन्वॉल्व इन दैट एंड द मीन टेम्परेचर डिफरेंस दैट इज एल एम टी डी सो वॉट हैपन वेन आई एम डिजाइनिंग शेल एन ट्यूब हीट एक्सचेंजर आई कंसिडर एफ टी करेक्शन फैक्टर इन लॉग मीन टेम्परेचर डिफरेंस एंड दैट लॉग मीन टेम्परेचर डिफरेंस कॉरेस्पॉन्ड्स टू द काउंटर करेंट फ्लो ओके सो एफ टी फैक्टर कंसिडर्स द मिक्स फ्लो बिकॉज इन शेल एन ट्यूब हीट एक्सचेंजर वी हैव को करेंट काउंटर करेंट एज वेल एज क्रॉस फ्लो ऑल थ्री पैटर्न विल अकर साइमल्टेनियसली एंड देर फोर वी हैव टू कंसिडर दैट थ्रू अ मैथमेटिकल टर्म एंड दैट इज एफ टी करेक्शन फैक्टर सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल कवर एफ टी करेक्शन फैक्टर इट्स प्रॉपर वैल्यू हाउ टू चूज द राइट वैल्यू ऑफ एफ टी एंड वॉट इज द एंड वॉट इज द consideration while choosing ft factor and after that we will discuss fluid allocation to shell side and tube side and then we will discuss some velocity as well as pressure drop limitations okay in shell and tube heat exchanger so let's start with ft correction factor so as far as ft correction factor is concerned we consider that considering two different parameters first parameter is thermal thermal effectiveness of exchanger and that we represent with p and the ratio of two and the ratio of and the ratio of two heat capacity flow rate that is r so here we have two parameters p and r and uh, depending upon these two values we will consider ft factor value okay so what is this p and r p is the thermal effectiveness of the exchanger it means how effectively the heat transfer take place in an exchanger so obviously it will depend on the temperature difference okay so if i consider expression of p p is basically p is basically t h i minus t h o okay and t h i minus t c i okay now if i consider this t h i minus t h o that is the temperature difference of one fluid that is the hot fluid okay and this t h i minus t c i what is this t h i minus t c i is nothing but maximum driving force or maximum temperature difference available in a heat exchanger because highest temperature will be when hot fluid is entering that is thi and lowest temperature will, would be when cold fluid is entering that is tci so that is the maximum temperature difference available in the system and thi minus t ho is basically temperature difference of one fluid that is the hot fluid so what i can say over here that the maximum value of p should be 1 okay maximum value of p should be 1 because in this case no driving force will be close to t h i minus t c i okay and further if i speak about uh, heat capacity flow rate that is r so that is c p h by c p c so t c o minus t c i by t h i minus t h o okay so this capital c p this is not a small c this capital c p is heat capacity flow flow rate and that is the multiplication of m into specific heat fine of hot fluid as well as of, of cold fluid now this is basically the combination of p and r okay if i consider p as t h i minus t h o can i consider p as t c o minus t c i divided by t h i minus t c i okay instead of hot fluid temperature difference can i take for cold fluid temperature difference definitely i can fine but in that case the combination will be for p 
but in that case the combination will be for R we have CPC by CPH, right. So, whatever would be the numerator of P, okay, the same would be the denominator of R that would be the proper combination. So, in some books you can find different terms of P and R like um, TCO minus TCI divided by THI minus TCI, but in that case R would be CPC by CPH. Okay. So, this I am repeating because you have to keep in mind that this is not only the correct expression, other expressions are also there, but that should be in combination. And what is the combination that I have already explained. Fine. Now, I will speak about that how we should consider FT correction factor. Okay. To explain that I have to consider another parameter and that we call as temperature approach. Fine. So, considering temperature approach we usually have three basic conditions. The first condition is when we have sufficient temperature approach value. Okay. Now, what is temperature approach? Temperature approach you can uh, see in this uh, diagram where I am having this is the hot fluid, okay. this is the hot fluid where temperature decrement is there and this is the cold fluid where temperature increment is there. So, temperature approach is basically the difference between outlet temperature of hot fluid minus outlet temperature of cold fluid, difference of this, difference of this. Okay. That is basically the temperature approach as you, as you can see here. Now, if this is the case, then I can represent F T factor in this uh, diagram. This is the F T factor graph. You all must be aware with this, where on x axis we have p value and we have different uh, lines, different curves for r value as shown over here. Okay. And we have given one factor that is the F T factor if it is equal to 0.75 or more we consider that design is feasible. right? Now, how I can consider that design is feasible? Fine. Feasibility means what? When I am considering heat transfer what is the meaning of feasibility? Feasibility means whatever would be the cold stream okay, or whatever would be the temperature of cold fluid that temperature will be that temperature will be less than the temperature of hot fluid all the time. Okay. Then only natural heat transfer will take place okay. because it will definitely move from high temperature to low temperature. So, cold fluid temperature should always fall below hot fluid temperature. Fine. So, if you consider this uh, diagram here I am having a hot fluid, this is the hot fluid and this is cold fluid. So, at each point we have cold fluid lesser than the hot fluid, this much temperature difference is always there, fine. So, this is basically the proper temperature difference and, and heat transfer can occur easily, right. So, what is the point that if I consider counter current flow? at every point cold fluid temperature will be less than hot fluid temperature fine now what will happen in 1 2 shell and tube heat exchanger okay if let's say instead of enthalpy if i am considering here length okay if length is there and here i am having temperature also so if 1 2 shell and tube heat exchanger is there what i can say that terminal temperature should not change Okay, because whatever temperatures uh, are available for hot fluid and cold fluid that I cannot play with. Okay. So, if I consider 1 2 shell and tube heat exchanger and if hot fluid is moving in shell side. right? So, shell side because one flow is there, so it will enter here and exit at this point. right? Now, what will happen with cold fluid? Cold fluid will move in tubes and that is 2 pass, right? but outlet temperature of cold fluid will remain at this point only. So, how this movement will occur along the length? First, it will move like this 
and then it will move like this right so along the length in one one, one two shell and tube heat exchanger the movement is like this and further what i can say that at each point cold fluid temperature is less than the hot fluid temperature it means at each point heat transfer becomes feasible okay so if this is the case ft factor will lie in feasible zone where ft factor will be greater than 0.75 okay now why i have put the bar of 0.75 because when i am considering lmtd for counter current flow we multiply that with ft correction factor right and that ft correction factor reduces the temperature driving force okay reduces the mean temperature difference so if temperature difference will be reduced area will increase manifold right so to put a bar on area we consider we put a bar on ft correction factor because i cannot change lmtd temperature i cannot play with i can make a bar or put a bar on ft value and that value that thumb rule is that it should be greater than 0.75 it doesn't mean that if it less it doesn't mean that if ft correction factor reduces then 0.75 heat transfer will not occur heat transfer will occur but the area will increase many fold so that we consider as infeasibility right so if this is the case where temperature approach is sufficient we can counter or we can we can consider proper heat transfer in one two heat exchanger also and therefore in that case ft correction factor will be more than 0.75 okay if you calculate it will definitely come more than 0.75 because temperatures are, are because temperatures are like that okay now further if i consider another condition another situation and another situation means what when i am considering temperature cross okay now what is temperature cross let's discuss with this temperature cross is basically when hot fluid exit temperature is lesser than the cold fluid exit temperature when hot fluid exit temperature is lesser than the cold fluid exit temperature okay in that case what will happen in that case if i consider counter current flow okay if i consider counter current flow or if you focus on this diagram at every point cold fluid is lesser than the hot fluid okay so feasibility is maintained but as far as counter current flow considers okay if i consider now if i consider one two shell and tube heat exchanger and hot fluid is available in shell side okay so exit temperature of hot fluid will remain as it is right now what will happen with cold fluid cold fluid exit temperature is this now if one two heat uh, now if one two shell and tube heat exchanger i am considering and i am considering length on x axis then this temperature should be allocated here okay so in that case what will happen this for first moves like this and then it will move like this so what will happen in this region okay here we have higher temperature of cold fluid than the hot temperature then the hot fluid temperature okay which is not feasible okay however we can consider a some amount of temperature cross okay in that case if this situation arises then what will happen ft factor will be equal to 0.75 fine so what i can say that up to 0.75 little bit temperature cross is occurring that is fine okay now what will happen in temperature cross is it possible that cold fluid temperature increases than hot fluid temperature okay in some cases you can understand you can uh, uh, argue that because there is a mixed flow counter current co current flow so in some cases is it possible but usually what will happen it will not reach up to the desired temperature 
cold fluid will not reach up to the desired temperature it means desired heat transfer is not possible and therefore i am saying that temperature cross must be avoided okay so as temperature cross increases ft correction factor falls rapidly which is the infeasible design okay because we should not because we should not allow temperature cross okay so i hope you understand that 0.75 is a bar is a thumb rule to control the increment in heat transfer area okay and that will be due to the temperature cross okay so if we want to avoid the infeasible design we have to avoid the temperature cross and for that purpose ft factor should always be or equal to more than 0.75 okay now next is if i am considering more temperature cross then what will happen let's see if you see this uh, graph here we have more temperature cross up to this much temperature cross is there so as far as counter current flow is is considered i am again saying that no feasibility is occurring okay however in one two shell and tube heat exchanger we have this kind of flow okay so sufficient temperature cross will be there okay so sufficient temperature cross will be there and this we are considering as large temperature cross so what will happen in that case in that case the ft correction factor falls rapidly and it will lie in a region of infeasible design okay now my point is why this ft factor decreases okay to explain that let's compare temperature approach and temperature cross okay now what will happen if i consider this diagram temperature approach is what temperature approach is basically this value if i consider hot fluid temperature so this is the so this is the outlet temperature of hot fluid and this is the outlet temperature of cold fluid so this difference is basically temperature approach right okay now if temperature approach is there what is the p value p value if you remember that is basically the inlet temperature of hot minus inlet temperature of cold okay so the difference is around this much fine however if i am considering temperature cross then what will happen this line will fall up to this level okay and now p value will be what this minus this so what will happen as temperature cross increases p value will increase right because uh, denominator value will decrease okay now what will happen if i am considering same r okay let's say this r i am considering and if temperature cross increases p value will increase so if i am operating over here and temperature cross occurs so p value will increase so slight increase let's say slight increase in p reduces ft correction factor rapidly fine because now it is falling in this asymptotic lines okay so as temperature cross increases ft factor decreases rapidly which we should avoid fine so we will also discuss that what we have to do when ft correction factor falls less than 0.75 okay but first of all you should understand that oh, what will happen when ft factor reduces then 0.75 fine so in that case temperature cross increases which we should avoid okay temperature cross basically cold fluid increases then hot fluid so what will happen at that point uh, local reversal of heat transfer will take place from cold fluid to hot fluid or in some cases cold fluid will not reach up to the desired exit temperature so all this infeasibility will occur when i am considering temperature cross so that we should avoid okay so ft correction factor ft correction factor says that 
the rule of thumb okay rule of thumb is what ft factor should be greater than 0.75 to consider practical design so if i am in considering 0.75 that is uh, okay i have to do that fine now how i will do that if ft factor comes 0. Point, if ft factor comes less than 0. 0.75 Okay, because I have already told you brief, brief, because I have already told you before that I cannot change the terminal temperatures. Whatever would be the temperature cross, I should not change the inlet and outlet temperatures. Okay, then how I can improve FT factor? FT factor can be improved by considering more shell passes. Okay, here what I have considered one shell and two tube pass. Okay. And if one shell will remain there and I will keep on increasing tube passes, so hot fluid will pass only the shell once. Okay. So, no change will occur in fluid which is flowing in shell side. So, if I have to improve the temperature cross, I have to improve the shell passes. Okay. Now, I will discuss one example with the flow pattern inside the heat exchanger so that you can get the idea that if I increase the shell passes how FT correction factor can be improved. Okay. Because whatever FT factor graph you have seen till now that is only for 1 2 shell and tube heat exchanger. If I consider 1 4 shell and tube heat exchanger FT correction factor graph will different than this. So, there we can find for the same terminal temperature Ft should be more than 0 0.75 that is the advantage. Now, I will show the pattern that how Ft correction factor, uh, how the shell passes improves temperature cross and so the Ft correction factor. Okay. So, here I am explaining that with the help of this example. Here you see we have temperature and enthalpy profile where temperature cross is large. Okay, this much is the temperature cross. Okay. Now, if I provide, if I now if I draw that in one two shell and tube heat exchanger, so you can understand here we have the schematic where uh, fluid enters once two shell and exits. Fine. And in tubes, fluid will enter from here. It will pass through this and then it will exit from here. Okay. Now, what will happen? It will pass twice in tubes. Fine. So, that you can understand from this uh, graph there he that you can understand from this graph that here we have temperature as well as length. So, in shell pass fluid moves once only and in tubes it moves twice. So, here I am having the temperature cross. Okay. So, this condition I should avoid. Okay. So, I will increase the shell passes fine and here we have the same condition like this. Okay. These two graphs are same and here what will happen instead of one shell we consider two shell. Here fluid enters in one shell, exits and then enters to second shell and then exits from second shell and if I am considering two shell. I have to consider four passes in tubes. Okay. Once tube will be like this and then tube movement will be like this. right? So, here we have this kind of condition. Now, what will happen? I cannot change the terminal temperature. This temperature, this, this, all these temperature will remain same. So, when the fluid is entering, so, when the fluid is entering this temperature will be equal to this you see this is okay. and then once it will exit the first shell it will enter the second shell and then finally, it will exit. So, this temperature and this temperature will remain same fine. Now, what will happen with tube side fluid? Tube side fluid this is the inlet temperature this is the inlet temperature which is equal to this temperature fine. So, and then it <coughs> so the fluid starts from here and then exits in first shell which is basically which is basically this shell 
okay. And then at this temperature it will enter to the second, it will enter to the, it will enter to the second tube at this temperature, okay. You see and then it will move like this and then it will move like this, okay. So, what I can say that uh, when I am increasing the shell passes, the movement of fluid will be like it will never cross the hot fluid, okay, because its path will change, fine. So, that is the advantage of increasing the number of shells. So, when I am increasing the number of shells, I am avoiding temperature cross, I am increasing F T correction factor. Okay. So, when F T correction factor you have found less than 0.75, immediately you have to increase the number of shells. So, that is the basic design parameters. Now, we will consider another point that is how I should allocate the fluids to shell or tube side. Okay. Now, before considering this allocation, one thing you should keep in mind that whatever verse you are doing. Okay whatever verse you are doing that you should do with tubes not shell okay you have to keep that in mind okay what is the meaning of that if i have come across with some bad conditions that condition i should allocate i should consider in tube side not in shell side because tube side maintenance is very easy in comparison to shell side and tube side uh, what I am saying if uh, I consider the cost also, so tubes cost will be very less in comparison to shell because shell diameter is significantly large than the tube diameter. Okay. So, that you should keep in mind and then let me start with the factors based on that we can allocate the fluid to shell side or tube side. The very first factor in that category is the corrosion. Okay. What is corrosion? Corrosion is the phenomena when the reaction will take place between fluid and the material, tube material or shell material or we can say the metal. Okay. So, there we have the rust formation etcetera. So, it will weak the material, it will weak the equipment. Okay. So, how I can consider that uh, corrosion? Corrosion can be removed, corrosion can be uh, eliminated considering special alloys. Okay. So, if you are finding that fluid is highly reactive to the material, allocate that fluid to tube side. Okay. What I have told that whatever verse you are doing, just do it with the tubes. Okay. So, high corrosion fluid should be allocated to tube side and reason is very simple that to avoid that corrosion, we can use special alloys and the cost of that material is very expensive. So, when I am preparing tubes with that material, it becomes cheaper in comparison to preparing a shell with that material, fine. So, high corrosion fluid should be allocated to, so high corrosion fluid should be allocated to tube side. Next is fouling. Okay, how fouling will takes place that I have already explained, it will depend on temperature and the solubility. Okay. So, I am not going into detail of that. So, you should understand that the fluid is having either a high tendency of fouling or low tendency of fouling. Okay. How you can ensure that? You can see the dirt factor table which is with you okay, in volume 6. So, the point is when you are dealing with high fouling fluid that should be allocated to tube side. Because what will happen when you are considering the tube side, you can consider more velocity there okay? and when you are increasing the velocity, it will take the scaled material with it okay? which we also call as erosion, but erosion of the metal should not occur, erosion of scaled material should occur. Okay? So, that we can control with increasing the velocity in tube side. Secondly, tube side cleaning is very uh, easy in comparison to shell side because tube side we have the straight pipes only. Okay. So, straight pipe cleaning uh, you can do easily in comparison to zigzag uh, space which is available in shell side. Okay. And when you carry out the design of shell and tube heat exchanger, you will see that a space in between two tubes in shell is sometime lesser than the tube ID. 
so you can see the high fouling tendency fluid should be allocated to tube side okay and reason i have already explained fluid temperature okay if fluid temperature is high that should be allocated to tube side okay so if temperature are high enough to require use of special alloys placing the high temperature fluid in tube side will reduce the overall cost okay so because of the same reason so how i am considering reduction in overall cost when i am considering tube or shell okay so what will happen when this material will play a role okay it will play it will play a role by making the uh, it will play a role by making the tube or shell it means whatever would be the material involved in tube or shell directly it will give the cost okay so what will happen when i am saying the material in, in so what will happen when i am saying the material involvement it means the thickness of the material or thickness of the shell or thickness of the tube fine and how that thickness will occur again the same expression which i have discussed uh, uh, in previous lectures also that t is equal to pd not by 2 fj plus p so here if i am considering same pressure and if i am considering diameter so tube is having lesser dia so it will have lesser thickness in comparison to shell so material cost involved in tube manufacturing is very less in comparison to shell so we can use costly material and alloys easily in tubes or in less price in tubes in comparison to shell okay so high fluid temperature should be allocated to tube side similarly high operating pressure that should be allocated to tube side because high operating pressure or we can say high pressure shell is very costly in comparison to high pressure tube okay in the same uh, line as i have explained just now that uh, Uh, because pressure is constant so thickness will be directly proportional to the diameter and shell dia is very large in comparison to tube dia so high operating pressure should be allocated to tube side now what will happen if i consider viscosity okay so generally the high heat transfer coefficient will be obtained by allocating more viscous fluid to shell side okay but this is with the condition that it should provide turbulent flow in shell side okay and in shell side flow is not straight because we have different arrangement of the tubes so continuously zigzag motion will occur in shell side so turbulence in shell side is uh, obtained at lesser reynolds number in comparison to tube side okay tube side when i move uh, tube side is basically straight pipe and when reynolds number exceeds 4000 it comes under turbulent flow zone however in shell side critical reynolds number is around 200 if reynolds number exceeds then that we consider that as a turbulent condition so you have to consider the viscosity of the fluid which must give reynolds number more than the critical reynolds number in shell side and if it is appearing you should allocate the fluid to and if this is occurring you should allocate the fluid to shell side otherwise tube side okay so and next point we have about the stream flow rates so allocating fluid with lower flow rates to shell side will normally give more economical design okay so lower so lower uh, flow rate means uh, so lower flow rate in shell side means at low flow rate it gives the uh, turbulent and it will give better heat transfer coefficient okay so lesser stream flow rate should be allocated to shell side so based on this discussion we have this uh, order of priority to allocate the fluid okay so tube side corrosive fluid should be allocated hot fluid should be allocated fouling fluid should be allocated less viscous fluid should be allocated and high pressure fluid should be allocated and in shell side condensing vapor until unless it is not corrosive 
high viscous fluid and low flow rate stream should be allocated to shell side. So, what is the meaning of this priority? It means I have to first consider corrosive fluid okay, and then hotter fluid and then fouling fluid like that we have to arrange fine. So, uh, let us say if um, uh, corrosive fluid has lesser temperature okay, then only I should allocate that to tube side and then in that case hot fluid will be allocated to shell side, but that will work because more problem is with corrosiveness than the hot or cold temperature. Okay. So, I have to decide according to this priority table. Okay. And now, we will consider some velocity and pressure drop conditions in shell side and tube side. So, typical design velocities in shell side and tube sides are when I am considering liquid, liquid tube side flow rate should be 1 to 2 meter per second, maximum 4 meter per second and if I am considering water, it is 1.5 meter to 2.5 meter per second. Similarly, in shell side, it should be 0 0.3 to 1 meter per second okay. and if I am considering vapor, we have to consider the uh, velocity in these ranges. Okay. So, these are some permissible limits um, to handle the liquid and vapor in shell side and tube side and in the similar line, I can consider the pressure drops in shell side as well as in tube side. Okay. So, that pressure drop limits are as per the optimum design. Okay. For liquid, if viscosity is less than 1 milli Newton second per meter square, maximum pressure drop should be 35 kilo Newton per meter square and similarly, if uh, viscosity changes up to 10 milli Newton second per meter square, we can consider this much as the pressure drop range. In the similar line, we can consider gas and vapor pressure drops. right? So, when a high pressure drop is utilized, care must be taken to ensure that resulting high fluid velocity does not cause erosion or flow induced tube vibration. So, we have to take care about that, that vibration should not occur in tubes. So, permissible limit of pressure drop must be maintained along with the velocity. Okay? So, these are some of the guidelines about the design and all these guidelines we will consider in design of shell and tube heat exchanger. Okay? And these are some references you can go through about detailed study of the basic design parameters and here we have the summary of the video and this summary is of the video and this summary is of lecture 4 as well as this lecture also. Okay? So, in these two lectures we have discussed basic design equation in detail, overall heat transfer coefficient, dirt factor and mean temperature difference. We have considered, we have discussed FT correction factor in detail and then guidelines to allocate fluid to shell side and tube side. We have discussed and after that finally, we have discussed permissible limits of fluid velocity and pressure drop in shell side and tube side. So, that is all for this lecture. Thank you.